Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at GTC 2012. It's just wrapping up, and I'm here with Pierre Spatz and Alistair Houston. Uh, Pierre is with Murex SAS, and Alistair, you're with NVIDIA. Correct. So um, we're here to talk about financial uh, applications on GPUs, something I didn't really think of together prior to this. So, so Pierre, what, what's it all about? What do you guys do? What we are doing, we are building financial simulators. In fact, we do not evaluate the future, but what we do is that we, we, tr we simulate what could happen, all the possibilities. And then from that, we evaluate products, which are very complex. And I don't know if you know that, but many banks may have supercomputers at home. They've got something like, we know major banks with something like 100,000 cores. And when you talk about 100,000 cores, you would think about Los Alamos, you would think about huge center, but they've got, in fact, supercomputers. But banks do not use these computers as supercomputers. They use them as grid of small computers. And it means that most of their code is, in fact, monothreaded. And it's very different from the code that people have at the level of uh, the, the centers where globally we solve one problem. Here in finance, we solve many problems and we add the result together. Okay. But it means that for a long time, we have not really focused on the performance of the evaluation of one product and rely on this, this overall throughput. But we are arriving at the end of that. We cannot be at that anymore. So, we are, we at Murex, but also in major banks, we need to rewrite the whole code that we have in such a way that the evaluation of a single product becomes fast. Because we cannot rely anymore on throughput, which give results at the end of the day. We need to have results now. Because you have seen the crisis and all these things, we need to monitor far more closely what we do. And this is the whole story. To monitor closely, it means we monitor real time. Maybe not real time, maybe every minute, but not every day. Okay. So that's the reason why many banks and the software company like ourselves are targeting now GPUs. And we have m had major success on this point, is that we have retaken our whole code, and now it works relatively well on GPUs. And the good thing also is that, apart from huge speed-ups that we obtain for our standard customer, is the fact that now we can offer the same solution that the biggest one have to smaller one, mm. who have a less good infrastructure at home. Because buying computer is something, but you need an infrastructure to under them. You need people also, and it's very difficult. And really, we see these, these GPUs are our salvation in a way. Okay. So is this uh, an embarrassingly parallel problem in its nature? I mean, does it map well onto the, we the GPU architecture? In fact, we got two types of problems. One is Monte Carlo simulation. So clearly, Monte Carlo simulation is embarrassingly parallel and works perfectly well on GPUs. And the other part is more PDE-based, works better on GPUs than on CPUs, but we got limitations like anybody else working with PDEs, with sparse matrices, and so on. Okay. But the b big issue that we got is at the level of the Monte Carlo. Okay. okay. Now, Alistair, question for you. Now, uh, what's the genesis of this? Did you didn't go go to Wall Street and say, "Hey, these GPUs would be good for what you're doing"? Did, did they come to you? How did, how did it work? It was kind of a bit of both. Yeah. Um, there was some Mavericks out there around 2008, 2009, um, spotting the opportunity of the GPU and the potential for one in Monte Carlo. Um, uh, Pierre talks about Monte, uh, Monte Carlo. It's widely used for pricing complex uh, exotic uh, derivatives yeah. uh, and also for risk analytics, uh, market risk and counterparty risk. And so over time, particularly with uh, the Fermi GPU uh, and, and the forthcoming Kepler GPU, um, we, we've got a great solution for Monte Carlo and, and to some extent PDE. So. Uh, uh, we work very closely with Murex uh, and um, we're beginning to see real progress now in financial services. It's been a few years coming, uh, it takes time, um, but uh, we've got a number of m l large major banks now going into production with hundreds, 
GPUs now. Really? Well, uh, and virtually every bank is now evaluating the technology. Sure, sure. So coming from um, Sun Microsystems as they did, we always had trouble getting the banks to talk about what they were doing yeah. because it was a, a competitive weapon. Is that the case here? Are they holding their cards close? Yeah, they tend to because uh, where GPUs play in pricing and risk is a very sensitive area for the banks. So they regard their pricing algorithms, the way they do their risk is very proprietary, is their differentiation. Um, and so it is quite unusual. Yeah, I came from Sun as well to get banks to talk about it, but we were very successful last summer with JP Morgan Chase. They chose to go public with their use of GPUs uh, to do risk for equity derivatives. Um, we have a number of other uh, tier two, tier three banks going public with their use of GPUs. So it's, it's becoming increasingly widely adopted and not so, not so longer, not so much now as a, as a strange pioneering technology, but something that's in the mainstream. Terrific. So I guess a question for you, Pierre. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, a simulation is only as good as the model, right? And you're trying to simulate all possible um, uh, situations, right? Uh, I mean, how, how do you go about doing that and have any way to test it against uh, the real world? It's a very good question. So, back testing is always possible, but the future does not represent the past. So that's why, apart from standard if simulation for the evaluation of each product, people have to run simulation above the simulation to stress stress the parameters. So it means that you see that we are really embarrassingly parallel, and it's a huge issue. Okay. And regulation forces now really to increase a lot this type of simulation above the initial simulation. So clearly, pure compute will only, uh, not only be the solution, we all know also need to think about algorithm which enable us to mix both simulations. So we still have work to do at the level of the quantitative size, and we are progressing well. But it's a r your question is very interesting. Yeah. So, as you get more computation available, do you make your grid finer? Do you simulate more things, or do more iterations, or more towards real time? What's the goal? We do a mixture of everything. So first, we've got we want to give a quicker answer, and then we increase parameters. We increase number of paths, we increase the, the, the grid, the decrease the grid size, we, we increase the type of sensitivities to the model that we display to the trader, and then the trader begin to have, the, are more comfortable with their results, so it means that they can trade more, and then we need more computers again. So it's an infinite loop. Well, it sounds like a great market for you, Alistair, and uh, uh, it sounds like you guys are making traction. People are, are, are seeing results. Uh, what happens now? I mean, you've got Kepler coming to market. Do you think we'll see start reading about this more in, in the papers? What yeah, think? I think we will. I think you know, we're, we're growing very nicely. We're going well, and more and more uh, banks adopting the technology. It, it's, it's the right time at the right place, really. Um, there's huge pressure on the banks to do more. Uh, compute uh, regulatory pressure to re Basel III yeah. re regulatory uh, compliance is driving a need to do far more compute to do risk intraday rather than overnight and so the banks are casting around looking at ways to be able to respond to these challenges the GPU is a very natural way to go. Terrific.